Welcome back, everyone. So much has changed since the last time we talked. The beta is now open. Uh, it's not gone away. It's still in beta, but it's open. It's not closed anymore, which means that everyone in the world can now publish um, Instagram effects using Spark AR. So because of that, I have been, um, there's been a lot of questions about how to just get started in this stuff. Um, so I realized that a lot of tutorials that are out there can be a little overwhelming because they start off with you assuming that you know even the first thing about what you're talking about. Uh, this tutorial is not going to assume that. This is going to really just kind of get you off and running and get you familiar with the layout of the program and the terminology that's used um, in developing these things. So let's get started. So the first thing really obviously that you're going to want to do is download some software. Um, the first thing we want to get is uh, Spark AR, obviously. So if you go to sparkar.com, if you go over here uh, to the download button, um, you will go ahead and get to uh, your download uh, installer. You'll download the installer for it and go ahead and install your software. And you should get to something that looks pretty similar to this screen here. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you have downloaded that, you've installed it, you've signed in with your Facebook account, and you're already good to go. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is download a uh, code editor. Uh, this is an optional piece, uh, but I would still suggest doing it because if you really want to uh, up your game and give you all the power that it has to offer, you're gonna to wanna to use one of these. So. I use, um, a lot of people will use one called Sublime. I use one called uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, which is made by Microsoft, and it's an open source free uh, editor. But I actually go one step further and I get one called VS Codium, which is the exact same software, just not licensed by Microsoft. Uh, it is released exactly the same time, the builds work exactly the same. So if you, want to, you can use this. Uh, this is actually the exact same thing. It just doesn't quite have uh, the Microsoft logo on it and they don't get to track it when it crashes and stuff. So, um, but beyond that, it works exactly the same. Uh, the next optional piece of software that I would suggest um, would, be, uh, would be Blender. So Blender is a free uh, 3D editor. So you can um, edit 3D models. So you can download 3D models off sites like Sketchfab, uh, CG Trader, TurboSquid.com, uh, dot, dot com, yeah, TurboSquid, um, and others, and uh, or Poly.Google.com, and you can bring them into Blender and you can edit them. So this is how I really just started getting into this was by using Blender and then going to tutorials uh, on YouTube to try to figure out how to edit models um, and animate models and rig models and eventually uh, create your own models. So. Um, that's kind of the goal of the whole thing, and that's what we want to try to get you to do. But this is uh, beginner stuff, and you don't necessarily need this. Uh, but the further down the rabbit hole you go, I bet you'll probably want to just go ahead and try it. So um, if you can, download it. Um, or if you have access to, um, there's other uh, software that you can use as well, like Maya um, or Cinema 4D. Um, or some other ones as well. Uh, even Dax is one. Um, or Days, not Dax. Um, so, uh, yeah, so let's go into, go ahead and assume that you have gone ahead and downloaded, either downloaded these optional ones, but you definitely have Spark AR downloaded and installed. And here we are in our magical Spark world that, uh, looks a little, uh, daunting at first, but once you get used to it, it's pretty simple. So the first thing we're going to cover is this thing over here, which I don't know what this is called, but I'm just going to call it the action bar because it has actions that you do. So uh, there's a workspace switcher, which will hide things like the console, which you might need, or the patch editor, or things like uh, the asset summary, which will show you uh, what you um, have in your project as far as your weight, uh, like images and things like that. Um, so we'll just go ahead and hide all of these. There's also, you can see the shortcuts for doing the same thing. Um, or you can just go ahead and close them here, which we will do. Yep. Okay. So then um, underneath of that is your video. So your video is how I am getting my video up here on the screen. I'm using my, uh, my webcam here, which you just click this button to use it, or 
you can use one of these built-in videos here. Pretty cool, right? So the cool thing about using the built-in videos is that you get to test things like skin tones, uh, which is really important to test for because everyone in the world is different. Um, face shapes, uh, hair. So people who have things like um, uh, a lot of, you know, if they have big hair, if they have um, some sort of a hat or a wrap on their head, or if they have uh, large glasses, there's a lot of different things to test for. So um, that's what's great about these and even people's movements. So I like this guy because he kind of gives a little bit more of a jerky movement to his stuff than everybody else. And, uh, and it's kind of fun being able to test him against somebody like her who goes a little bit more of a smoother, you know, back and forth. So, um, really it's really helpful for, for skin tones. And then you have this one here, which is kind of your flat plane, which is if you are putting things like models on the ground, or if you want to put an image on the ground or whatever. So this is for like tracking a flat area. So let's just go ahead and assume that, uh, you're going to want to look at yourself. So you just click this button up here and that's how all of these cameras work. Now, what's interesting is if I were to go to my applications folder and go to spark AR studio and show the package contents, uh, by just right clicking and go show package contents. I can go to resources and if I scroll down here, I believe that these are in here somewhere. Uh, videos, there they are. Uh, these videos here are actually the videos that are being used for these guys right here. So you can go replace these videos and load whatever video you want to inside of this. You can even rename it just to dot webin and it will play it. Um, that's pretty helpful actually. So here's the empty video, for instance, that just shows the plane tracker. But if I were to open up, uh, Kimba here, there she is, or um, Ambika, I'm sorry, Ambika. So, um, so yeah, so there's those videos. If you do want to uh, replace those, you can, um, I don't really necessarily need to, but if you're doing things like, uh, if you're recording this, for instance, in post and you want to make like a music video or something and you want to go up here and like flip this sideways and say that you have uh, an iPad Pro. So um, now I have this, you know, widescreen video. And now if I want to do something that's AR related, um, I can record my screen and get a pretty good high quality version of Spark, uh, Spark effects out of it that I don't have to use my phone for. Um, so if you're doing something like that, then, uh, then I would suggest digging into this, uh, folder here and, uh, and replacing those videos. That way you can make some cool stuff that is neither here nor there. Let's go back to, um, the action bar over here and go ahead and finish our wrap up here. Okay. Let's make this smaller. So my head isn't quite so big. Okay. So as we go down here, obviously pause is going to pause my video. So you can see my phone here. Um, I'm not paused, but the, the window here is paused. I'm able to zoom in. Uh, the pause thing is very nice. If you have a lot of moving things in your scene and you need to move things around, just go ahead and hit pause up here, move them around and then hit play again. And then you're off and running again. So this is great for being able to pause your scene go through things. This will restart everything. Uh, I use this quite frequently. If spark is running sluggish, I'll try to restart it just to see if maybe I can get a good fresh build. Um, and then um, also if you're having code errors, uh, this will be very friendly with this restart button up here uh, and play. So moving all the way down to the bottom, uh, we have uh, click here to send to your phone. So this is the name of my phone here, portable disaster unit, uh, or I can send to directly to an app. So this is actually pretty cool. Um, I can send this directly to the Facebook camera or directly to the Instagram camera without having my phone connected at all. I don't need my phone connected for that. So, um, and, and it just shows up as a notification. I can just click it and it, and it works. Um, the one drawback to that is without that wired connection between your phone, you cannot actually do a live debug of code. So uh, you can't use things like the console to output things. Um, so you can't get a read uh, quite on what's happening on the device when you're pushing it to there. So what I would suggest is always using uh, the Spark AR player on your phone first to do all of your development, push to that, and then when you have your, um, your code stable, then you want to push to uh, Instagram and Facebook to test your layouts and your visual uh, representation and your performance too. So, um, so yeah, so that button is to push to those. I'll cover that in a second. And then uh, this is to actually export your effect. So if I were to click this, this is how I would export my file to get ready to submit it. So if I did that, 
Um, let's just call it a uh, new effect. Yay. So there it is. So there's my, uh, there's my export file right there. Um, if I want to, this actually will open up the Spark AR Hub. And this is where I would actually go to upload a new effect. So I could go here and I could uh, upload a thing and do new effect and we will cover all of this in another tutorial. But this is where you go to actually upload everything. The next thing that we're gonna cover down here is the library. So the library actually is pretty cool. This is connected to something called Sketchfab and it allows you to download 3D models. So if I wanted to, um, I could look for things like uh, like bottles and I could find a bottle that I want and uh, go ahead and import that bottle directly in here. Um, and this is if I'm logged in, which I'm not. But anyway, um, I can actually pull these models in and use them directly in my scene and uh, not even leave Spark at all. So it's pretty cool that they have that integrated in here. Uh, the next thing down here is a bug report. So um, I would ask that if you are um, interested in helping the community, please submit bug reports. Um, you are part of the beta still, even though it's open. Uh, it is still a beta. So if you do find things that are wrong and there are going to be things that are going to break, uh, go ahead and submit a bug report. Uh, that's how you do it. You just click down here, give a title. You can even attach your project file. So if your project file isn't loading or working for some reason, you can zip it up and attach it. Uh, and even say, include the project uh, or include a screenshot. So uh, pretty detailed, and they actually do care about that stuff. So please do that. Uh, the next thing here is the learn. And when you click that, it's going to go to um, the Spark AR website, which I would suggest really diving into. This is where you're going to find things like tutorials, on how to do things like um, you know, the quick start guides, uh, how to preview your effects, um, and, um, and other, other, other uh, different, different um, things that you can start with uh, to really kind of get rolling with things like the patch editor uh, and things like that. So moving on down the line. Um, the next thing we really wanna cover here are, are these uh, guys here. So this is gonna be your scene tab I'm going to switch this back over here to my device, iPhone X. Make it a little bigger. Um, this is going to be um, this is going to be all the objects that are in your scene. So everything that's in your scene uh, is considered uh, what is called an object, and you'll see this Add Object button right here. Um, so the device is an object, and you'll see when I highlight uh, things in my scene that this thing over here on the right is called the Inspector will change, and it will show me different options right up here. Uh, as I go through. So um, that's really important and it's uh, for the curious, uh, this is really where you get to have some fun is going through here and uh, tinkering with what these uh, settings do. So uh, I would suggest going through and really just kind of getting familiar with every single aspect of this. But most of these things are pretty uh, self-explanatory. These are our fake lights that are in the scene. They come by default. Um, you can see that when you highlight them uh, that they are there and then you have things like ambient light that you can also control. Uh, again, these are fake lights in the scene, not real lights. So um, so uh, really let's go ahead and cover what objects uh, technically are since all of these are objects. So you do see things in here like the device is an object, the camera itself that's part of the device is an object. Uh, the focal distance is actually what's being seen inside the camera and then you have your microphone. Uh, if I want to add an object, these are great because when you click this and you click on these, it gives you a description for what each one of these things are. So let's say, for instance, I'm going through here um, and, uh, and I want to make something, uh, add some sort of object to my scene. I can actually just roll through each of these options and read what each of these are to get a pretty decent understanding of um, of what everything is. So you'll notice that some of these are grayed out, like option target tracker, hand tracker. The reason for that, you'll find right down here, it says unsupported by Instagram because currently some of these things um, are not available on that platform. If you do wanna use these, you can. You can use them for Facebook. You just need to go click that link, edit capabilities, deselect Instagram, click done, and then we'll go back to add object and look, there they are available. So. Um, to get all of the features of Spark, if you deselect Instagram, you'll pretty much get everything. So 
Um, so yeah, so, uh, but make sure that when you're building effects for Instagram that you do go select that as a, as a platform capability or platform uh, that you're going to use. Otherwise you might be building things that don't work. So anyway, uh, these are all different things that you can add. So we have, uh, the, these are all broken down. So we have things that are in a scene understanding category. So these are things that um, are trying to detect things within your scene. So your scene meaning anything that's within this view of the camera here. Um, one is a face tracker, which obviously is going to be tracking a face in the scene. So if I were to add this, it would track my face. Um, the next one is going to be a plane tracker, which is going to detect flat planes. Uh, so the ground or table. Uh, the next one is going to be a target tracker. That's going to detect an actual target image, uh, target texture. So that means if I wanted to use something like a movie poster and put something on top of it that tracked to it as I move my phone around, this is the this is what I would use. My target would be uh, would be the movie poster. Uh, the next thing is a hand tracker, which I can actually track hands in a scene. So if I click that um, and I can add hands in a scene, that will track anything that looks and appears like a hand. Um, so that's kind of wraps up what the scene understanding uh, capabilities are. Inside of each one of these, you have multiple points that you can that you can track. Hand tracker, not so much, but face tracker. Uh, definitely. And they're adding more and more things every day. So, um, so yeah, so then we'll go ahead and move down here. We have 3d objects. So 3d objects are things that you're going to put into your scene that exist that, um, well, let's just say that aren't there that are going to be part of the world. So, um, I can add things like a plane. Um, I can make a 3d object that I can import, uh, from blender. For instance, if I go download something off another website like CG trader or turbo squid, I can import it. Um, then you have a thing that's a face mesh. I can insert that. That's going to, um, that's the thing that's built into Spark AR that wraps to your face that allows you to distort faces or, or, uh, add, you know, drawing things to faces or, or, or other things. Um, the next thing is 3d text. That's, uh, obviously what it sounds like text. That's, that's 3d. Um, and then, uh, importing vector objects. So you can do, um, um, SVGs and all kinds of stuff now, which is pretty cool. So, the next thing are going to be 2D objects. So if you think about 3D objects, that exists in the world, in the scene with me, right? 2D objects are going to exist flat on my screen. So uh, a rectangle is going to be a flat block that just sits on my screen um, there, uh, right in front. And no matter what I do, it's going to be in front of me. So it's if you think about it like an overlay or a sticker. Um, you can use that uh, to also do a lot of powerful things. So don't just think of it as a sticker, but if you think about it as a flat thing that sits on top of the screen, you'll be good to go. Uh, 2D text is another thing uh, that just isn't 3D text. It's 2D text that sits on the screen. Uh, so you can use it for things like um, uh, uh, scoreboards um, and, or date time, all kinds of stuff. So then we'll move into lights. Uh, we have ambient light, directional light, environmental light, point light. These are all the different lighting available inside of Spark. I would highly suggest reading about how lighting works um, and playing around with how this actually is powered uh, in this software. I will say that there are some creators out there who are really, really, really uh, great uh, at figuring out the lighting on their effects. And, and there are a lot of people who build um, effects who don't even know that you can mess with the lighting. So uh, it makes all the difference in the world. So I would definitely suggest doing it. Um, okay, so another thing um, is going to be, uh, the last thing I guess is going to be your effects. So we have a speaker which allows us to put things like playback controllers so we can play audio, so we can play little clips, we can play music, we can play things like when you open your mouth it plays a sound or when you blink your eyes. Um, so we have an ability to put a speaker, uh, a virtual speaker inside of the effect. Uh, the last thing is going to be a particle system. You've probably seen these like when you open your mouth and a bunch of like emojis fly out of it. That is a particle system um, or things that are like look like fireflies in the background. Uh, that's a particle system and that comes with um, that comes with the uh, uh, that comes with the uh, the software itself and uh, requires really just that you plug in an image to use for the particles. Uh, it does not support 3D objects, uh, but it does support 3D movement. So, um, so yeah, so let's just go ahead and, and get started here. Uh, and so we're, that way we can actually reference what these other planes are as we're going. So what I'm going to do is just build a really simple effect that I see a lot of people build, which is to have a, an HUD or a heads up display effect that floats in front of your face. So if you think about what we're doing, 
um, we're really just wanting to put a transparent PNG um, on top of, um, in front of my face. So I've actually gone uh, to the internet here and um, found one uh, that is uh, this guy right here. So this is uh, transparent and it just has this black uh, piece here um, making up uh, what the image is. So one thing that's great about this is I want to be able to um, add a um, image to um, my face, right, that floats in front of that. So how would I actually take that transparent PNG and put it in front of my face? Well, the idea is you need an object to apply that PNG to, right? So what we want to do first is we need to track it to the face. So the first thing we really need to do is put in a face tracker. So that's all it is. It's tracking my face. You can see that these lines will move back and forth as I'm moving around. Um, the next thing we want to do is underneath the face tracker, we're going to add a plane. So now that I've added a plane, you can see what that looks like. It's just a, it's a 3D object, but it's a flat surface, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a plane, uh, and it's tracking to my face because I have it as a child of this face tracker. If I were to pull this out and put it underneath, you can see that it no longer tracks to my face. It is still a plane, um, and it still has all these uh, settings for it, but it doesn't track to my face. We don't want that. We want it to track to my face, so we're going to put it underneath there, right? So if you think about what we're doing here, we have this object, now we need to add this image to it. So how do we do that? Well, there's something that you add to all objects in almost all 3D work, which is called a material. The material you can find over here, but we're gonna go ahead over here and just say uh, add asset, and we're gonna click material, and we're gonna call it uh, HUD. So we're gonna go up here to our plane, we want to add a material. We're going to add our new material that we just created called HUD. So now we have our plane and we have our heads up display material down here. And you can see that it actually has some shading to it. So you can see that it will get dark as I'm away from that virtual light that you can remember we were talking about our virtual lights. So you can simulate what looks like reflectivity in a scene using this. So materials all work uh, with different settings. There's different types of shader types, which you can see up here. This is called a standard shader type. Standard will use virtual lighting in the scene to light it, so you can get things like shadows. Um, flat will not. So you'll notice that that is what it sounds like. It's flat. It does not care about the lighting in the scene whatsoever. I can make it whatever color I want to, and it's just going to be a bright version of that color. Um, then you have physically based, which you can do things like metallic materials. Uh, you can do uh, environmental maps using HDR textures. Uh, so what that means is if you've seen effects where everything looks like it's covered in plastic or it's very shimmery, um, that's using an environment filter. So you get that kind of reflectivity gloss uh, mixed with these surface parameters. So um, let me mute my things here. So. Um, so basically what's, what that means is that um, you can go through and you can add things that look like a physical material. They're physically based, if that, if that makes sense. And then there's other ones too, like face paint, uh, which have uh, different types of um, um, settings that you can play with if you want to. Um, and then you can go uh, to blended, which is, which is another, um, another material setting. So you, you can really dive into this stuff and play with it as much as you want to. For our, our purposes, I am going to use this as a standard material. Okay? So let's say I do have my, uh, my HUD here. And uh, what if I don't want it to be black? So I, I like the image, it's cool, um, but I wanna apply it to this material, but I want it to have be reflective, right? Let's say I wanted to make it like sea foam looking like a aqua, so it looks futuristic. Um, or what if I wanna change the colors uh, dynamically? Um, that's actually not that hard to do. So what you, want, what you need to do is you go to your materials here. Um, so underneath your standard material, you'll see all your settings here. And this is, for instance, um, your diffuse for your shader property. Uh, so you, we can add that texture as our HUD, which is just go ahead and do that so you can see what that looks like. So there it is, right? It's black, and no matter what I color I select here, it just stays black uh, because the image itself is black. So, uh, so it's always gonna be black. 
Uh, so let's say I don't want it to be black. Well, the way that I would do that is because it's transparent, it has something called an alpha channel, which means I can see through parts of it. Um, so let's just go ahead and select alpha, and we're gonna select that HUD as our alpha channel, and then we're just gonna remove it entirely from here. So now what that means is everything that doesn't, everything that's passed through and that image is passed through and everything that's not is applied with this color, which means that I can now go through here and change the color. So let's go ahead and select our sea foam looking kind of color that's a little, little greeny blue. There we go. Um, so there you go. So now that thing is tracking to the center of my nose. <laughs> uh, what we want to do is actually track it to um, my eyeball. So that's really easy to do. All you do is you select your object over here, and then you have your tools, which you can see up here. These are your three manipulator uh, tools that you have here. Um, you have your uh, different axis that you can move your your uh, your uh, image with or your, your 3D object. So we're gonna move this plane around and really just kind of use the placement to get it above my eye. There you go. And that's it. I mean, there's nothing to it, right? So what's interesting is if you think about it, you could take this image here and you could just take each piece of it and just make all a bunch of different PNGs and then layer them all in a bunch of different planes. So if I wanted to, I could duplicate this plane. Now we have two of them. And let's say I want to scale this one to three uh, by three by three. Uh, so now I, have a now I have a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Uh, but what that means is I can also put them on different um, different levels. So if you can see here, like that, right? It's pretty cool, right? So just with the power of a transparent PNG and a plane, I'm able to track things to someone's face. I can put things on the sides of things. I can do this also with image trackers. Uh, for instance, I could go to a movie poster and I could put uh, transparent PNGs on top of that. Um, I can layer things out. You can add depth to things. You can do uh, you can do quite a bit of things. So I hope what this has done really is um, explain how most of these features work. Um, ultimately, my suggestion is you always want to uh, test on your phone, uh, which is the really the last thing I'm going to cover because it really is important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on my phone here. Uh, this software here, the player with the Spark logo, uh, is what I use. You can go download it on the App Store. It's called the Spark AR Player. Uh, when you load that up, um, you're going to connect your phone uh, with your wire, of course, if you um, have an Android or iOS, depending on what you're doing. Uh, go ahead and wire it up, and then you'll see down here, uh, when you push to your phone, it will show up with the name of your phone. So my phone is called Portable Disaster Unit. When I click Send to my phone, it will update that effect. So now you can see over there, this is what it looks like actually on my phone. So what's important here is to note that your phone has a different camera than your webcam. Your computer has a different um, uh, graphics processor than your phone does. So when you're developing on in Spark, you wanna make sure that you're always pushing to your phone because ultimately that's what matters. It doesn't matter that it works in uh, the development tool if it doesn't work on the device. So uh, there are things that are possible uh, on your computer, uh, on your development, in your development um, uh, tools that you can do that are not going to work on a device. Uh, and that has a lot to do with the performance or, or other aspects. So um, things to note when, you're do, when you are pushing to your phone, um, your software that you're using, the Spark Air software, you're going to have problems pushing to it. It's the reality of the software. Um, this stuff is all kind of brand new. We're all figuring this out. The things that, uh, the nuances I have that I've noticed are um, sometimes if you, one, if you disconnect the wire, like if you disconnect and then come back and you connect it, if Spark hasn't been closed and reopened, and I mean like actually force closed, like bringing things up and then force closing them, and then opening them up again. Um, if you don't force close it between those disconnects, then it's not gonna be able to push, so you're gonna need to, you're gonna get pretty familiar with being able to uh, to force close the Spark AR app because it, it's just the reality of it. So so get used to that, um, that's, just a, that's just the way it is, and um, as you're pushing to that uh, stuff, just keep that in mind. So if you do get errors when you push, 
Um, like here's one right here. I just clicked it. I've just opened this up. Uh, make sure your phone is unlocked. I've gotten this one before. All you have to do, click send again, and it pushes right to it. So you're going to get some things to happen um, because uh, honestly, this is uh, this is some pretty new stuff, and you're and you're still uh, still part of the beta program. So always keep that in mind. So uh, thanks so much for um, watching all of my tutorials. I know it's been a bit since I've done one of these. Uh, this is pretty exciting time right now just because we have so many new people joining and uh, trying to figure out how things work. Um, as we get more and more uh, kind of traction um, with, uh, with people in the, in the community uh, being able to share their stuff, um, I'm sure you'll see more and more of me and more, more of these tutorials coming out because uh, I don't plan on stopping. So l let's, just, uh, let's just keep helping each other out. And um, I will ask too, um, if you do uh, use a patch that you've downloaded from the community, which if you're not part of the community, please go there. Um, it's on the it's on Facebook and just search for Spark AR community. Um, if you're not part of the community, go there. Um, but if you have used um, a patch or if you've downloaded an effect file uh, that's gotten you at least 20% of the way of where you're trying to go, uh, take the time and credit the person that helped you out because uh, without us all sharing our work, um, it would be a hard, hard road because um, there are things that, uh, that take a lot of time that some people have mastered that others don't, things like visual shaders and, and things like that. So uh, if you are using these things, um, please make sure that when you uh, uh, post your effects, um, and share them out that you are crediting uh, the people who who um, who helped you get there. So um, anyway, um, I feel like if we do that, then we can all just kind of keep this thing going and we can we can all be successful together. So so let's do it. Um, thanks so much for watching. Um, I appreciate um, again, uh, if you can follow me or subscribe to my channel, uh, follow me on Instagram. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on any one of those things. And uh, until next time.